Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool. And in this video we're going to have a look at how we can create a geometry node setup that's going to create sets of tracks for tanks in seconds. So let's have a quick look at how this is going to work. So we've got a load of wheels here, which is going to be what our track is going to run along. And then we're going to Shift and D to duplicate this. I'm going to press Ctrl and J to join this as one object. You can see that's one object here. And then once we've got that, all we need to do is add modifier, geo modifiers, and I'm going to go to Trackify and I'm going to click on the object that I want to use as my link, which I've made over here. So that's already there. So use the pipette, click on that, and we've got all of our tracks, and I'm just going to use this to add more links, or basically reduce the length between them, and that looks just about perfect. So there we go, we've got our track set up. It's that quick and easy to do. No more making curves, no more raying along curves. It does it all as part of this process. Absolutely awesome. So now that we know just what this can do, let's get started. So we're gonna select all of the objects that we're interested in being our wheels, basically what the tracks are gonna be going around. And instead of spending loads of time creating some curve that goes all the way around these, all we're gonna do is Shift and D, to copy them, escape so they stay in the same place. We'll select our link and let's forward slash. So now we're only seeing those and then we've not got the wheels that are behind being selected. Then we'll shift select all of these and press Control and J because these need to be one object. And we'll have to remember that we need to do this when we want to use this modifier. So I'm gonna to come to my modifier panel, add modifier, and we want to add a geometry node modifier. And let's get those geometry nodes ready to go. So we're gonna move up there and then we're gonna select our geometry node editor. And we've got this ready to go. We just need to either click new here or new here. Let's go here and we're gonna name this. I'm gonna call this Trackify because it's creating tracks. Now I've already got a Trackify, so this has been renamed Trackify01. And then we'll get a good look at our geometry nodes. Now for me, these always appear really small. So I'm just gonna Press A to select all of the nodes, and then the decimal key on my number pad to zoom into them. And let's just move these apart a bit. And we are gonna want this geometry, and the first thing we need to do is create this shape that's gonna go around the outside, or basically be the boundary for all of these objects. Now what I've done is quite intentionally make these objects potentially have some problems. As if this was for 3D printing, I've basically put some holes in these, and then they're gonna be where this would slot on to different objects, but I've intentionally done this one the other way around to create a potential problem because I kind of want this to work even if there's gonna be some potential issues and it needs to work anyway. And we'll have a look at that and what problem it causes in a second. So what we're gonna do is Shift A and then I'm going to bring in a geometry node which is going to be convex hull. Now we'll bring that in here and all we need to do is drag that into this and we get our convex hull. Now we talked about convex hull in the previous video and we had a look at what this does basically making this shape. So if you wanna have a look at that, you can understand how this is creating this shape. But you can see here we get this weird slight issue because we've got this protrusion. But also we want this to be really thin. We want this to be infinitely thin actually because we are gonna turn this into a curve. So what we need to do is basically scale this down I'm gonna scale this down to next to nothing. So I'm gonna shift A, and we're gonna bring in a scale elements node, just here. Now, this is where some choices are gonna become important, and I want to show you why we're doing this in a certain way. So firstly, we can scale uniformly, which would be on all axes. We don't want to do that. We want to scale on a single axis. So let's bring that here, and we only want to scale on, in this instance, the x-axis. We want to scale this way. So we know that this is gonna be x, y, and z, so at the moment, that's right. We want to scale on the x, so we've got that set as one. If you want to scale on multiple of them, or in a different axis, you'd change this so that, say for example, the y-axis was one. Now with that done, all we need to do is drag this into our convex hull, and this will scale, except it hasn't done anything, because at the moment it's set to scale at one, and well, that means it keeps everything the way it is. We want this scale to zero, and you'll see this has gone infinitely thin, but there's some issues. You can see here all of this face fighting, and this doesn't look very good. In fact, it's gonna create a load of geometry we don't want, and that's gonna cause problems, because there'll be effectively edges all over this, which will cause us problems. So actually we don't want to put the scale elements here. We want to drag this out and put the scale elements before we do the convex hull. And this is gonna make a slightly neater shape. It's not perfect, but it will do. 
So I generally would put that there. Now, interestingly, this doesn't always seem to center perfectly right. If you remember, in fact, if we just hide this geometry node set up for a second over here in my modifier panel, we can see that originally the origin of this was right where we wanted it, right in the middle of each of these cylinders that the tracks are going to go over. But when we bring this back, this is shrunk or scaled off to the side. I don't quite know why it does that. I think it might be to do with where the geometry is and the fact that I've got lots of hollows in this has caused this problem and then I've got the bit sticking out and that could cause you problems as well. So what we need to do is get this back to the origin of this object and it's going to mean it's more easy to control. We can move the origin around and it will control where this is. And We do this using the center section of this scale elements and we want to tell it where to go. I'm just going to bring in a vector node and all I need to do is keep this as 0, 0, 0. And interestingly, that won't zero it out to the world origin. It will zero it out to the origin of the object. So let's put that there. And you can see what that has done. It's just brought it along to where it was. And now we're nice and centered. So this is going to work great. Then we need to do what you'd normally do and convert this to a curve. So let's shift A, mesh to curve. And then we'll drag that in here. And we've got our curve. Now at this point, if you're really happy with this and you prefer not using geometry nodes, you could just leave it at this. You've got a curve and then you can array our track link along this curve, which is effectively what we're going to do. Or you'll notice if you don't like the way that it disappears or our node setup disappears when you click on something else, if we come back here, if you click that pin icon, it will stay there so you can keep looking at this. Now, I don't want to do that. I'm going to try and do this as wholly within geometry nodes as possible. Let's move that group output out. So we're going to need to change our curve or do something to our curve to make this work. And we've got two options. What we're going to want to do is instance this along the curve, but we need to tell it to have places to instance this on. Basically, we need to break this into points. And we can do this in two ways. Let's shift an A. We can use a resample curve. So let's put that just there. And that allows us to change how many points our curve is resampled into. So at the moment it's 10. We could put that much higher if we wanted to. Or we could do it by length and say, do a point every single 0 0.1, whatever our units is. I use blender units. You could do this in meters or whatever. Let's put that up to 1 just so it's not going to be crazy. So this would work. But it has a bit of a lack of information that we can pull out of this. Instead, I'm going to use a curve to points node, which is here. You can see this gives us extra information about the curve and the points that are being created, including the tangent, the normal, and the rotation. So this is possibly going to be a bit more useful to us, and it still has the ability to go into length. And I'm going to put that as 1 just to begin with. So we're going to use this, but you could use the resample curve should you choose to. And I have used that in previous videos, so there's nothing wrong with either one. So let's drag that in, and we've now got a load of points. And you can see, we can sort of start to see these points. I'm not sure if this will come up on YouTube very well. But it's going to be a lot easier if we bring in our instance on points. So let's drag that in there, and we start to instance an object. And we're going to want to instance this track link. So what I'm going to do is drag in my track link here, create an object info node for the track link, and I can just bring that in to the geometry as the instance and now we've got a track link every single 0.1 I can make that less or I can make that more in terms of the length so this will work now notice the orientation is not perfect on this but we'll deal with that in a second now before we go any further I want to make this work a lot nicer you saw that in the beginning where I didn't have to come into the geometry node to start changing things around and to do that, we can add things to our group input. Again, if you've seen some of my videos using geometry nodes, we've done this before, but I just want to make sure everyone's happy. So just group input, bring that in there. We've already got our geometry, and we want to set our object through this. So let's get rid of that, drag that into here. And now, if we come to the object that this is being instanced around, you'll notice we can't actually see anything for this, so I had to click over here in the object outliner. You can see now we've got the ability to have an object. I just click on it, click on the object, and then it creates it. So I could, if I shift a mesh and bring in a, I don't know, a cube. Let's G that over there. I could come to this, click that and the pipette, and it's going to make loads of cubes instead. So 
I can change around really quickly and easily from this menu. The other thing that I'm going to want to do is be able to change the length. Now I can do that already, but it would be good to be able to do this as a group input. Now you can do this, I could just drag this in here and it would work, but I like having everything a bit more neat than that. So I'm just going to bring that up there and bring that in here. And you can see now that we've got a length and we can change that as well. So that's really handy. But I'm going to make it a bit neater still. I'm going to bring that out here and I'm going to use something that we've done a previous video on called the gizmos. And we're going to use a radial gizmo, which allowed me to rotate this around to change the numbers. And it's really quite nice and visual. Though I do want to mention this is only available in Blender 4.3 and onwards. So if you have Blender 4.2, you're going to need to come to Blender 4.3 if you want to use this. So let's go to gizmo and we want a dial gizmo. I'm going to bring that in here. And this works in a slightly funky way in that I drag the length into this value and it creates this double link here. And then it allows me to rotate this around and it will start creating more or less links. At the moment, this is rotated around the way I don't want it to be. I want it facing me. So at the moment, it's pointing towards the z-axis. Let's put that to zero. I want it to point towards the x-axis. So we'll turn that to one. And now I can rotate that round or this way to make more or less. Now, I don't like the way this works. I want it to rotate clockwise to add more, not less. So this is a bit of annoyance to me. We could do that in a number of ways, but the easiest way is just to turn that X to minus one and it's flipped everything around. And now if I drag this way, it's more, that way it's less. So that works for me. The other thing I'm gonna change is this screen space here for how we see this. I don't want it raised to screen space. I just want it to work in the same way as other objects. And I zoom out and get smaller and bigger. So that's pretty much perfect at this point. So we're doing quite well on this. This seems to be working nicely. But we need to sort out this rotation and luckily we've got lots of ways of doing that. We've got our curve to points and it's got lots of things that we can use to do this. And I guess actually it's got rotation. Normally wouldn't use rotation. Let's see how that works. Now this does actually seem to work in many ways. Look, we've got this going along with our object. So that is pretty nice. And I guess... I might be able to do vector maths with this. I didn't use this originally. I'll talk about what I did. I just want to see if this works. Obviously, if it's in there, there's some element of it working because otherwise I'd have cut this out. So let's just type in vector maths, bring that in here, add, and I want to change this on that. So yeah, I can rotate this around to the point where it works, like there. What is that? Minus about 1.6-ish. Now that's not perfectly flat. If we hold down shift, we can get it to do smaller increments. So somewhere like there, I mean, that works. So we could definitely do it this way. Let's just up those lengths. I mean, that definitely works. Yeah, so you could definitely do it just with using vector maths. I'm going to show what I'd normally do with this, because this would also work with the other choice of using the resample curve. That does seem to work really nicely, actually. I'm kind of surprised that worked as well as it did. So let's look at the other option. I'm just going to alt click and drag that up. I think you need to have Node Wrangler activated for that alt click to drag out to work. And instead of doing this, we're going to use the tangent, which basically is saying the direction that this is pointing in. So tangent, go to rotation. It's going to go horrible because the tangent shouldn't go into the rotation. Instead, we're going to shift an A and we want to align a rotation to a vector. So we're going to bring this in here and we can say put a rotation in and a rotation out, but we're not. We're putting a tangent in, which is a vector type. So let's get rid of that. And then we can start fiddling around with these settings. And you basically need to kind of just fiddle. This seems to work with Oh, there we go. Y in auto seems to work for this. I think that's, yeah, Y and X. So you need to sort of just tweak these, and it's going to depend on what your setup is. But effectively, you've got all of the options here, X, Y, and Z, and then you've got the auto and then X, Y, and Z here, which will make things in different ways. So the Y and X seems to work. That's got the same result, apparently, as doing this and rotating it around by minus 1.58. So I'm going to stick with that. Let's delete that out. So this align rotation to vector. This used to be align Euler to vector. 
but they seem to have done away with that naming convention, maybe. Oh, there you go. Look, there is still a line, Euler to Vector, but they seem to have an issue with it. So I'm guessing this is there so that if people used to use this, they know that it's still there, but you'll notice it is basically exactly the same thing. Let's delete that out. So this is working at this point. We're pretty much good to go. We know that this is creating the track links as we want. The only issue that we've got now is that if I then confirm this, everything is going to disappear. If I come here and apply, it says that the geometry doesn't contain a mesh at the point that we're finishing. So it's got nothing to create. But it does have a mesh. I've got, I can see it. But actually, this doesn't really exist because instances aren't actually there. There's something that Blender's showing, but the geometry isn't really present. To make it present, we need to use a Realize Instances node. Drag that in, and you can see that suddenly all of this has become one mesh that we've got rotating around. You can see that because of the outlining changing. And at this point, I can apply this. So we'd get that created. So this is the final part of my design that's going to allow this to work. And with that done, we've got our node set up. Let's just drag this a bit here. So it's not a particularly complex node setup. It contains everything we need here. So let me just bring this up. Let's end to get rid of that so that you're very welcome to copy this at your leisure should you choose to. Now, before we finish, I do want to mention one thing just because I think it's worth mentioning to be complete. And that is that while this looks great, it's not always perfect. Here we go. So you can see here that whenever we have a corner or a turn, and here's another good example, because of the way this places objects on the curve at whatever the tangent is on that point, you're never going to get a perfect rotation or a perfect placement on these really sharp corners. And that's just because this link has some length to it. Now, if this was thinner, this would cause much less problems but you might have to go back and change this or modify this slightly once you've confirmed this modifier. But there's not much you can do about that. That is exactly the same issue as you get when arraying along a curve. It's just something inevitable with the way that the maths works out. Anyway, I wanted to include that just to make sure people realize that this isn't entirely perfect and don't have a heart attack if they can't get it perfect themselves. It's just a limitation on how this works. If you did want to, you could start doing things where these tracks could deform around these shapes and curves, but then it wouldn't work the same way a track does because obviously these are solid parts. Now, the other way that you can get this is on the channel Patreon, where I put up all of these node setups that I go through. And generally, if there's an old video that has a geometry node setup that someone wants, you can just message me on the Patreon and I'll share that as well. So you're very welcome to go through the process and create this yourself. As I said, it's not particularly difficult to copy, but if you would like to support the channel a bit further and get this without having to do anything yourself, and also it will come with the track link that I've made because it will be on the file, then please head on over to the Patreon and any support there is really appreciated. It really does help give me the time to make all of these videos. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to put them out as regularly as I do. If you did find this useful or you thought it was quite interesting, please hit that like button. Again, it helps share the video around. And other than that, I will see you for the next video. Have a great day, guys. And other than that, I'll see you for the next video. Have a great day, guys.